Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. What we're going to cover today is the Geometry Builder, the Geometry Builder Edit, and the Geometry Connector. We're going to go through and look at each one of these, and I'll cover any tips or tricks and everything as we go on this. So the first thing I want to go cover is the Geometry Builder. It is located on the Geometry tab underneath the Horizontal Group underneath the complex geometry pull down and when you go into it you'll see a dialog box that has the ability to enter data so what's it used for you can use it for entering any type of horizontal geometry you can enter centerline geometry right-of-way geometry parcel geometry or any type of geometry that you would like you can uh, apply rules, you can keep tangency, you can insert objects, move objects around as you go. So we'll cover some of the things here. Uh, one is uh, you've got over on the left-hand nav bar, you've got where you can pick your feature definition. It also use the active feature definition if you're using your feature definition toolbar. Uh, you can create geometry by selecting the new button. And you can have uh, several geometries loaded at the same time. In other words, I've got one in this case, but you can create multiples. And you can also save these out to an XML file that you can load up in case for somebody else that may want it or at a different time. So it will keep all your entries that you put in, adjustments that you've made. Um, so covering the left, there's your alignment, which ones you want. You've got some other buttons at the top dock to force tangency if you're entering uh, centerline geometry, uh, things like that. You can apply the uh, civil rules to the object, uh, or you can just create graphics, uh, which doesn't have rules on it, if you would like. Over on the right-hand side at the top, you can see that there's other tools, which we'll cover in a minute, and on the right-hand side of the dialog. Also, too, down at the bottom, you can see a report, a very abbreviated report on area, perimeter, closure, and everything like that. Of course, that doesn't make sense for centerline and maybe right-of-way geometry, but it does for doing parcels. And we'll cover some examples of this as we go. So some of the buttons, uh, as I talked about a little bit before, uh, you can do a tangent restriction, which basically forces tangency or not. So if you have it on, it does force tangency. Uh, and as you're entering items, for instance, if you enter a tangent and then go to enter a curve information, it will pick up the direction of the incoming tangent uh, to the curve. So you don't have to put that in. You've got, you can complex the uh, features and everything. Uh, you can also just create graphics if you want to. And you can also uh, rule those using the civil rules. The modify portion of it uh, allows you to modify the item graphically. Uh, you can insert a line, you can insert an arc, insert a spiral, insert a vertex, or insert a, a whole element that you have sitting out there. Uh, you can also, on the right-hand side of the dialog, you can insert a new item. You can move a line item up or down. You can fit that uh, particular element to the view. You can also delete an element or delete all, which basically clears it out. Uh, as far as units go, uh, no matter what your DGN units are, you can enter data in multiple different uh, unit types. For instance, uh, if you're in a U.S. survey foot file and I have a very old parcel that's in chains or rods, uh, you can enter that information in the chains or rods. Uh, also, you can enter it uh, as degrees, minutes, seconds for bearings or quadrants or azimuths. Uh, if you have degrees and you're in a degrees, minutes, second file, uh, it doesn't matter what your file is. You can enter it into the dialog into whatever your description is units are. Now, once you've entered it, you can actually change it back to the units that you want, and it will do the conversion on the fly. Uh, so that's very useful, especially when you run across older parcel maps, uh, legal descriptions, uh, old plans that have units in that don't match what you use today. So very handy for converting the units. So uh, also a part of this is I'm going to cover a little bit of the transform command which uh, you'll see the reason why, because when you're starting to enter data, uh, you may not have a 
a physical location of the point of beginning for the data. So you can just pick an arbitrary one and then actually move it into the location at a later time uh, if you want to, if you, once you get that other information. So you can move, you can rotate, you can scale, uh, move and rotate, rotate and scale, move and scale, move, rotate and scale. And you can also save these transformations also for a later use if you would like to. Uh, at the bottom down there of the dialog, you'll see the save as icons and you can open them back up. And you can see at the top, there's a transform you can select uh, what transformation that you've previously saved. So uh, on the geometry uh, builder, you can also have reports. Uh, of course, here's an example of a map check report that shows what your northern easting errors are for a particular parcel, uh, what the closing direction is, what the total closing distance, closed area, perimeter and the precision that's on that. It is also shown at the bottom, as you can see in the orange highlight down there at the bottom. You can also do closures. You can, uh, if you pick no line, of course, it doesn't close anything. If you force closure, it will add the closing leg to it. If you pick, you can also do a compass adjustment to close it or a transit or a crandall adjustment. Uh, so those are available to do um, closures on the parcels if you have parcels that you need to close. So let's go through and take a look at entering data. The first example we're going to look at is centerline geometry. So I'm going to pick a feature definition and I give it my geometry name. This is going to be Highway 72 centerline. So I'm going to pick an arbitrary point out here and we'll use the transform command to move it here in a minute. So I'll enter my first leg. We're going to use bearings, degrees, minutes, seconds, and U.S. survey feet. You can see here I'm entering the data uh, for the bearing and the distance. And you can see here that it's temporarily putting in that bearing and distance. I'm going to move that down to the bottom where you can continue seeing it as I add data. I am going to turn on my force tangency. Next one, I'm going to enter an arc, and I'm going to enter it by radius and length. And there's multiple ways you can enter uh, an arc. Uh, I just happen to use bearing and distance. And you can also pick the hand of the curve. I'm entering another tangent, as you can see, it's put in. And then what I'll do is I will go ahead and continue entering uh, another arc here. So I pick the arc type. It is a left-hand curve, so I don't have to change that. I'll enter the data for that and uh, the length, and you can see here that it's placed it in the file temporarily. Now I hit the place button, which actually writes the geometry into the file. Now I'm gonna use the transform command to actually rotate it uh, and move it into the place it should be. The first thing I'm gonna do is move it. Now you can use this in combination with move and rotate at the same time, but I'm going to show you the move. So you can see here that it's going to move the geometry to where it's supposed to be. And now I'm going to rotate it based on the bearing that it is, the bearing that I want. And you can see here, once I accept it, it rotates the geometry into the file in the correct location. Of course, you can annotate that, the geometry on that. So the next uh, example I'm going to do is a parcel. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set a point of beginning. Now, you can do this multiple different ways. I'm just going to set a point using my civil AccuDraw to give it a distance along, uh, basically a station and offset uh, along the center line here for the point of beginning. And you can see here that it's placed it at this location. I'm going to place it, rotate it the way I want to. And you can see here that it's placed my POB point. Now, once I've got that, I'm going to enter in my parcel information. You can see here that I'm naming it parcel one. I'm going to pick a feature definition. And I'm just going to pick an arbitrary location at this time. And we'll use the transformer command here shortly. So I enter my first leg. And you can see it's temporarily put it in the file, showing me what I've entered. I'm going to enter my next leg. And you notice that I missed the distance on the second leg there. And I'm entering my third leg and I'm going to put it in, but I can go back to my second leg and put in the distance there uh, and it corrects 
what you see temporarily in the file. Then I'm going to enter my my third leg here. If you notice down there, I'm going to run a map check report, and it shows me what my closure errors are. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and place it without closing it. Of course, I could have closed it using whatever method I wanted to. And I'm going to go in and pick the uh, location that I want to move it to, which is the point of beginning, and it's moved it there. And then I'm going to run a transform for bearings, and I'm going to match the bearing of the road there. And I'm going to pick the rotate. Uh, position there, and you can see here that it has rotated the parcel into the correct coordinate system. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is Geometry Builder Edit. Now, the Geometry Builder Edit, in some ways, is very similar to the Geometry Builder. However, there are things, so you can't just start entering data into here. It's a, for a specific piece of geometry. So you have to actually select the geometry that you want to edit, and it will populate the box, and then you can make your edits as you would in Geometry Builder. And then you can hit the Modify button after the fact. This is found under the Geometry tab, under the Horizontal Group, under the Modify pull-down, and it's the last tool in there called Geometry Builder Edit. You can edit center lines, you can edit right-of-way graphics, you can edit parcel geometry, you can edit graphics. You can even take a graphic element, bring it into here, and apply the uh, civil geometry rules to it and create geometry from just plain graphics. So we're going to go through and look at that real quick. I've got two pieces of geometry here. So I'm going to select my center line first, and you can see here that it's populated, plus it's giving you a preview of it. And I, right here, I'm changing the radius of my curve, and I hit Modify. Now I'm going to do a parcel that is just graphics. But as you see, once I've brought it in, I can apply the civil rules to it, and you can go through, and it applies the civil rules to it. So now it's actually civil geometry in the file. And you can go through and assign what feature definition you would like, and anything like that. So let's talk about the geometry connector. So the geometry connector is underneath the geometry tab. It's a complex, under complex geometry, and it's called geometry connector. Uh, this works very well to solve complex geometries. It goes through iterations. For instance, if you had a three center curve ramp uh, that you had your two tangent sections and you needed to fit in your three curves that you knew what the radius would be but did not know the lengths of them. This allows you to go through and it will solve that uh, thing for you. Other things, uh, if you have uh, multiple curves in a row, you can use it to solve the geometry. Uh, in the dialog there, you can see uh, I've got a begin element, an end element, which is the top and the bottom one. And in between those two elements, I have three arcs. Now, you'll notice there's checkboxes beside the length of the first element, the length of the end element, the beginning and end element. So with that toggle turned on, it says, allow me to vary the length of that element. Now, if you'll notice in the middle, there's also toggle for the length and radius of curves there. So if I turn those on, it will vary those. But if I know my radiuses are correct, I would turn off all the freeze on the radius and leave the links the correct to allow the links to vary. Of course, you have the ability to apply rules. You can keep tangency. You can make graph just regular graphics, or you can make geometry. You have the modify tools to modify the elements, uh, insert elements, uh, lines, arc, spirals. You can also move the elements in order up and down, or delete an element or delete all of them. So the geometry connector allows you to do all of that. So let's take a look at that. I've got two tangents here, and I want to put three curves in between those. So I select my first element and my end element. And we're going to add three arcs. And to start with, I'm going to add some arcs in here. I'm going to add an 800-foot arc, a 500-foot arc. And I'm just putting an arbitrary length in there for them at the moment. So you can see here, I've got a two 800s and a 500. And you'll notice now that I can change the hands of the curve and everything. So I'm going to keep my tangents, but I'm going to free up all my radiuses. 
And what's going to happen is you can see here, you know, I freed up all the links. And when I hit the compute, it went through iterations and went through and solved for those radiuses and the links. And then basically what I hit is apply, and that will write it into the file. So the geometry connector allows you to do things like that. Very versatile tool. Of course, you can, uh, there's some other things down at the bottom. There is a refresh tool that will back you up and also a report button that you can use. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.